uh, we discuss the definition of homogeneous functions. So homogeneous function of uh, degree n is defined in this way that uh, f of tx comma ty is equals to t power n f of xy for every x and y are real numbers. So here t is also real number and uh, we have discussed for this particular example that f of xy equal to the function is defined in this way that uh, uh, whenever xy is a non-original point then we will uh, discuss it's uh, we define it as xy divided by x square plus y square and whenever xy is equals to zero zero we define the value of the function to be zero All right so solution of this function uh, we have checked that whenever we substitute instead of x and y in, in the function tx ty we substitute we get the power of t common is t power zero so basically this is a function uh, 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 which is homogeneous and its degree is zero. So let us see some more examples. Uh, so if we take the function f of x y defined to be x y divided by square root x square plus y square where x y not equal to zero zero all right and value of the function is zero if x y is origin <clears throat> so question is is this function homogeneous Is it a homogeneous function? So that is the question. So let us verify it by substituting tx dy. So if you substitute tx dy, what we get? So as I have mentioned earlier also, when the function assumes the value zero, the condition of hom homogeneous is already verified there. Whenever function assumes the value zero zero at origin. Right, because if x y is zero zero, then t x t y is also zero zero. So both the at both the points, the value of the function is zero zero. So we'll check at the non-zero points. So for t x t y, when x y is not equal to zero zero, we will substitute the value of the function. So that is t x into t y square root t x square plus t y square. And uh, this value is nothing but t square divided by square root t square f of x y. Right? Because f of x y is x y divided by x square plus y square. So essentially, what we will conclude is that this is nothing but t power one f of x y. Right? So <clears throat> this happens basically if x y not equal to zero zero, and for x y equal to zero zero, anyway this is satisfies clearly. So clearly, f of t x t y is equal to t power one f of x y is equal to two zero if our point is origin. Because when x comma y is zero zero, t x t y is also zero zero, and value of the function is zero at that point. So therefore, the given function is homogeneous of degree and which is one, right? So this is just an example of a function where degree is, degree is non-zero. 
So these homogeneous functions play some role when we find the value of limit of a function in multivariable. So let us first see what is the definition of limit of a function. So limit of a function in terms of a sequence. <clears throat> so we studied the definition of limit of a function at a particular point for the single variable function. The same definition will extend for the limit of functions of two variables. Right. So the definition is that we say that the real number L is the limit of a function which is a multivariable function. So multivariable function basically will consider the functions from R2 to R or uh, the functions which is which is defined on a domain which is subset of R2 to R at the point So the question is, is that if the power of t don't come integer, then also it is homogeneous? Uh, yeah, in that case also we will say it is a homogeneous and that particular n is the degree of the homogeneous function. So we'll see how homogeneous functions play a role. First we will see the definition of limit of a function at a particular point. And after looking at some example, we'll uh, we'll see what is the its connection with the homogeneous function. So limit of function at point A B is L whenever we have a double sequence that is x n y n, which converges to A comma B. So here we are taking the points x n y n, which are different from the point a comma b so x and y n is a sequence in two variables which approaches to a b <clears throat> so whenever x and y n converge to a comma b this the sequence of real numbers So now we apply the function on this sequence. So that is f of x n y n. So now f is a function from R2 to R. So therefore f x n y n is a real number. So it is now, now this is a sequence of real number which approaches to L. Right. So if this condition is satisfied, then we say that limit is L, limit of the function is L when we approach x, y approaches to the point A, B. So here notation we'll use is limit x, y tends to 0, 0, uh, x, y tends to A, B, f of x, y is equal to L. So this is the notation, but to check this particular limit, we will check the limit along the sequences. So we have R2 plane and we have a point x comma y. So suppose I am checking x y approaches to the origin. Right. So basically we are discussing limit x y approaches to 0 0 f x y 
so this is an example <clears throat> so to check whether this limit exists what we need to check so for example in one variable if we need to check the limit x tends to 0 fx then what we do so in, in one variable what we do is uh, we have the graph of the function y equal to f of x and what we do is we we take a point x which approaches to 0 so approaching to 0 in one variable there are two ways either x approaches to 0 from right or x approaches to 0 from left and we'll check that whether both these limits exist and if it is equal then it is value of the limit of the function right so if right and left limit at the point 0 exist for one variable function and it is equal then the function has limit at that point if it is not equal it does not have limit at that particular point and in terms of sequences we check that xn approaches to 0 implies fxn approaches to 0 so to show in terms of sequence the limit does not exist what we prove in one variable to prove the limit x tends to 0 fx does not exist in terms of a sequence so what we need to check which condition we need to check fxn does not tend to 0 xn uh, yeah so we need to find a sequence xn which approaches to 0 but for that particular sequence fxn does not approach to 0 Right. So that is the condition we check for one variable function. Similarly, here what we check is that whenever we have a sequence xn yn, which is a sequence of points in xy plane which approaches to point AB, the image of the sequence that means after applying the function f, whether fxn yn approaches to some number L or not. So if, if we want to show that this limit fx y limit x x y tends to a b does not exist, what we check is we need to find a sequence x n y n uh, which approaches to a b, but f x n y n does not approach to a number. So does not approach to a number means basically we will find two sequences for which the limit is different so therefore the limit is not unique so that is what we prove when the limit does not exist right so here what happens is in one variable case there are only two ways to approach zero either from left or right but in multivariable there are many ways to approach the point x y to the origin either we can approach along the line y equal to x or we can approach along the the curve like y upon x square right so x is x approaches to zero y is x square so x square is also approaches to zero we can <coughs> find a limit in this way also so first we'll find y goes to 0 so if you take y goes to 0 we come at the point x comma 0 and then we take x approaches to 0 so finally both x and y are 0 zero. right similarly we can come along this curve also so here what we are doing first we will take x approaches to 0 then our point x y will go to 0 comma y and then we approach y tends to 0. 
so as many calls are there passing from the point x y and 0 0 along that we can approach to the origin so along any two curves if the limit is different then we say that limit does not limit is not unique and it does not exist but when we want to prove the limit exists what we need to check is we need to check for every sequence right so whatever sequence we take x n y n which approaches to the point a comma b fxn will always approach to the fixed number l it cannot approach to two different l l1 and l2 so that means the limit is unique so in this example basically we are taking a comma b is equals to zero zero right so this is this is not example actually it is a it is the special case of this limit <coughs> So, so let us see. Uh, yeah, this is a new topic, so it will, uh, we will take some time to understand it. So let us first uh, see some examples. Mm, I think I have some some uh, remark also. Uh, yeah. So this is definition of limit. Now definition of continuity. So if we know that the uh, definition of continuous function is that l is equal to f of a b so that is only thing we need to write that whenever limit f of x y x y approaches to a b is f of a b then we will say that f is continuous At the point a comma b, right? <clears throat> so this is basically continuity definition. The first example we will see is is the function f x y defined to be x minus y square divided by mod x plus mod y if x y not equals to 0 0 and at origin we will take the value of the function to be 0 0 so Yeah, so the question is that is this function continuous at origin? So we need to check that whether the function is continuous at origin. So by the definition of continuous function, we need to check limit x y tends to a b f of x y is equal to f of a b. So basically uh, here we are checking continuity at the point 0 comma 0 so a comma b is 0 0 for this particular example so therefore we want we want to show here that the limit x y approaches to a b is 0 comma 0 so therefore f of x y is equals to f of a b Again, a b is 0 comma 0 and we know that at origin the value of the function is 0. Right, so we need to check that limit x y approaches to 0 0 f x y is, is exactly equals to 0. Right, so what is our claim? Let us write down what we want to prove. We want to prove that limit x y approaches to origin so now since x y approaches to origin we'll take the value of the function that is x minus y square divided by mod x plus mod y 
and that equals to zero. So this is what we want to prove in terms of the function and the value of the function at origin. So this is a statement regarding limit, but now we need to convert this statement in terms of the sequences. So to prove this limit in terms of of the sequences, so that means the sequential defini definition of limit, we need to show that <clears throat> so what we need to show by the definition of limit, we want to show that whenever we have a sequence xn comma yn which approaches to the a comma b which is 0 comma 0 in this example, this implies that f of xn yn approaches to the limit which is 0. So what is f of xn yn? By the definition of function, it is xn minus yn square divided by modulus xn plus modulus yn, right? So <coughs> this is this is basically the value of the function, and uh, you want to show that this canal is to zero right that is what we want to prove so what are the tests we use usually when we apply uh, such a some function is continuous or limit exists in one variable For one variable case, the limit exists in terms of sequence. So, what what I, uh, what results or techniques we use to, sh to show the limit exists in terms of sequences? So, it's called less than equal to a number. Uh, so, basically, it is a squeeze theorem or sandwich theorem kind of thing, right? Or basically, we are comparing with other function which has limit zero, something like that. So basically, this that technique is known as squeezing. So we will try to squeeze this by a function which basically approaches to zero when x n and y n approaches to zero zero. So let us try to do that. So let us. Let us start with the function fxn yn, its modulus value. So that is nothing but modulus of xn minus yn square divided by mod xn mod yn. Now, in fact, the denominator is anyway non negative. So essentially, it is a modulus of the numerator. <clears throat> so what we can do is we can write this number as modulus of xn minus yn and on the other modulus of xn minus yn we'll apply the triangular inequality so what we'll get is modulus xn plus modulus yn divided by xn plus yn. So here basically uh, there are two terms which is a modulus of xn minus yn. One we are keeping as it is. The other term we are using the triangular inequality. So we can write down here that xn minus yn is less than equal to xn plus yn. 
right so essentially what we'll get is we'll get this is less than equal to modulus xn minus yn and then we can see that this terms xn y so what we are assuming is we are assuming xn y n our sequence approach is to zero zero so when, whenever we have a we have a sequence of numbers which approach to zero zero the sequence xn comma zero and zero comma yn also approaches to zero zero right so that means basically xn approaches to zero and yn approaches to zero so if we assume xn comma yn approaches to zero zero we get xn and yn both approaches to zero zero and therefore the difference also approaches to zero as n tends to infinity right so basically we have proved that the modulus of the sequence fx and yn approaches to zero as n tends to infinity whenever x and y n approaches to zero zero right and then we know that if modulus of a sequence approaches to zero then the sequence itself approaches to zero because this is a real number so it is a sequ fx and y n is a sequence of real number so therefore as if x n y n is any sequence which approach to origin then the sequence f x n y n also approaches to zero for all such sequences x n and y n whatever sequence you take you take x n equal to one upon n, x n equal to one upon n square, whatever sequence, in general sequence, which approaches to zero, we have proved that value of the function approaches to zero. So therefore the function is continuous here. The given function is continuous. at the origin <clears throat> so this is one example we have taken in terms of the sequences where we use a certain result which i have stated here that whenever x n y n is a point in r2 plane which approaches to origin if you only x n and y n both approaches to zero zero so let us let us write down this result in in terms of sequence so what we are saying here is whenever we have a sequence x and y n which approach to the point a b that means what that means the distance between these two number approaches to zero as n goes to infinity all right because we have a sequence xn approaches to l then xn minus l approaches to zero as n tends to infinity so that is the meaning of convergence of sequence in r2 and then we know that what is this distance between xn yn and ab so that is nothing but square root of xn minus a square plus yn minus p square that approaches to zero as n goes to infinity
and uh, this term square root of xn minus a square plus yn minus b square is always greater than or equal to this term modulus xn minus a right modulus xn minus a is less than or equal to square root of xn minus a square plus yn minus b square so therefore this particular observation gives xn approaches to a so basically xn minus a approaches to 0 because if this goes to 0 this also goes to 0 because it is smaller than that and similarly we will get yn minus b also goes to 0 is n tends to infinity because modulus yn minus b is also square less than equal to the square root right so essentially what we are saying is that our sequence xn approaches to a and yn also approaches to a so we observe in one way but you can also go in the reverse steps you can also go in the reverse steps so whenever xn approaches to a Oh, sorry, so this is y n approaches to b. So then modulus of x n minus a approaches to 0, y n minus b modulus approaches to 0. And then that will imply that square root of x n minus a square plus y n minus b square approaches to 0. And that is nothing but the sequence x n y n approaches to a comma b. So this is both the way to whenever x n y n x n comma y n sequence approaches to a comma b if and only if x n approaches to a and y n approaches to b so this is what essentially we have mentioned here using the diagram that whenever x n y n approaches to 0 0 if and only if x n approaches to 0 as well as yn approaches to 0. So therefore, xn minus yn modulus approaches to 0. So any doubt so far in this example? Okay, so then I will take one more example. So let us consider f of xy is equal to 2xy divided by x square plus y square if x comma y not equals to 0, 0. And the value of function is 0 if the point x y is equals to 0 comma 0 so here okay, so this file is over let me go to the next file so here the question is that does does limit xy approaches to origin if xy exist explain that <clears throat> so once again uh, in terms of sequence uh, we can see that the value of the function the function is this one so value of the function is zero at origin and uh, we need to check whether limit exists or not so let us see whether the function has limit l or not 
so so here we are not checking the function is continuous or not so therefore we don't know what is the limit so let us say the limit is l if exist we don't know whether the limit exists or not also so what we need to check is we want to check whenever xn yn approaches to 0 0 then fxn yn so that is given to be so function is 2xy divided by x square plus y square so therefore we substitute x equal to xn and y equal to yn we get 2xn yn divided by xn square plus yn square so fxn yn is 2xn yn divided by xn square plus yn square so we want to check this converges to l and uh, here we know that if you are finding limit of a function limit is always unique right so we want to check this for some real number l where l is unique real number because limit cannot be different whenever we check in one variable case left and right limit if it exists it should be same then only we say that the limit exists so here whenever x and y n approaches to 0 0 f of x and y n should approach to a single number l for all choices of x n and y n so if that happens if we can show that then limit exists otherwise limit does not exist so let us take some particular sequence and see whether the limit exists or not so let us take a particular sequence so what i will do is i will take a uh, so we mentioned that we can approach x y to 0 0 along the lines y equal to x y equal to 2x y equal to 3x so if we say that x and y n approaches to 0 0 along y equal to mx then our six sequence uh, we can take so let us take a particular sequence x and y n approaches to 0 0 along the y equal to mx line so that means our yn will be m times xn right so what we are doing is along approaches to 0 along y equal to m times x so y equal to mx means if m is 1 along y equal to x m is 2 y equal to 2x that way so we have said that whenever x and y n approaches to 0 0 we want to prove f x and y n approaches to single number so let us find out for this particular case what is f x and y n so f x and y n is uh, if you substitute y n equal to m x n we get m times x n so by definition of function f of x n y m x n will be 2 x n times m x n so what is the function 2 times x y so that is this one divided by x square plus y square so that is x n square plus mxn square right and what we want to show is we want to show xn yn limit of this function at 
is is x in y in approaches to zero zero. The limit x and y in approach to zero zero. The limit of f x and y in is l. So that is what we want to check. So now we will take limit of this this real sequence. So then f x and y in is this one, and therefore limit x n m x n converges to zero zero because y n is m x n f of x n y n so this is equals to limit now m is a fixed number so this limit is basically x n approaches to zero right if x n approaches to zero m times x n also approaches to zero so now it depends on x n only and uh, We have already found f x n y n. Y n is uh, basically m, m times x n, so that is two times x n m x n divided by x n square plus m square x n square. So since x n approaches to zero, x n is a non-zero number, so we can cancel out that. So basically, we will get x n approaches to zero. 2m divided by 1 plus m square and this depends on which m we are taking in the y is equals to mx line so therefore finally the limit is 2m divided by 1 plus m square so if l exists then l should be 2 times m divided by 1 plus m square so therefore L depends value of L depends on 2m by 1 plus m square so if I change m so in particular m is equal to 1 if x y approaches to 0 0 along m is equal to 1 so that means y is equal to x line right So then what we'll get, we'll get, <coughs> then we get x, x, the limit is m is equal to 1 in this case. So it is 2 divided by 2, that is 1, right? And uh, in particular, if we take, so basically x and y n. approaches to 0 0 along y is equal to 2 times x so that means m is equal to 2 we are taking so then what we get is we get the answer to be uh, so 2m 1 plus m square m is 2 so basically L is equal to 2M by 1 plus M square, M is 2. So 2 times 2 by 1 plus 2 square. So that is 4 by 5. All right. So therefore we are getting different values of L. Which is not possible. Since if we take, uh, since if the limit exists, it, it must be uniform. The limit L exists, then L must be unique. unique. So from this analysis along these different paths, we have concluded that the limit of the function does not exist.
okay so these are the basically two examples which we studied in one example we have shown that the limit exists by squeezing the other example we have observed by paths that the limit does not exist <clears throat> so so let me stop the recording and then we can have now the doubts <clears throat>